Welcome to the Beyond the Mic Show, a show where we interview top coaches, consultants, and experts about topics that will help you run your coaching business more profitably and serve your clients more effectively. I'm your host, Matt Walrath, and today's guest is Dave Smith. Dave was rated Canada's top fitness professional, and now he has a business mentoring other personal trainers who want to move their business online. His Facebook group called Online Trainers Federation was my inspiration for starting the Online Nutrition Coaching community. The way Dave runs his group is masterful. He provides so much care for both his paying and non-paying members. And the community generates content without Dave having to be the one posting every day. It's amazing to see. So I asked him to join me on the show to share insights about how you can use a Facebook group to provide value to your current clients nurture prospective clients, and create that FOMO and social proof that leads prospective clients to booking initial calls. This episode is packed with actionable info, so without further ado, let's get into it. Hey Dave, I'm super stoked to finally get you on the Beyond the Mic show because we've had a bunch of chats behind the scenes. I've gotten so much gold from you in terms of running an online coaching business, and I'm excited to finally share you with my audience. Hey, yeah, Matt, I'm super excited to be here, man. Um, likewise, I think you do awesome work. So yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. Yeah. And just for the audience, for a little context, I actually, uh, I was part of a networking group and Dave was kind enough to uh, share with uh, Eric, who you've seen on this show before, about some of his strategies with content leveraging. But also at the end, he had a perfect call to action. If you want to see some of this stuff in action, join my Facebook group. So I did. And I was just mind blown because I hated using Facebook at that point. But then I found myself just checking Facebook to see what was going on in his group, OTF Elite. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment. I don't know if it's yeah. a good thing that I'm getting you spending more time on social media, but I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah, no, it's, I, I don't think I'm spending more time because now I have my own Facebook group. And so I've started to model what you do. And I'd love to just um, dive in and pick your brain a little bit so my audience can see, first and foremost, why, why a Facebook group? Why is that such a powerful thing for building an audience and actually uh, nurturing them in a way that leads eventually to working with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So I dove into Facebook groups right when they came out. So I think I'm right in saying maybe seven or eight years ago is when I launched my first one. And it was actually for my fitness business. So my background is I went from being a personal trainer to being a gym owner. And then I sold my gym and started an online business. And when I started selling online programming, the way that I kept track of my clients was through this rudimentary Facebook group. And they were way different back in the day. It didn't have nearly as many of the features as they do today, but it worked really well. And one of the things that I noticed as I was coaching my online clients through the Facebook group was how sticky it made my business. And you know, you're familiar with the term stickiness. When we're sticky, it just means that there's more reasons why a client or a customer won't leave us and go to someone else. And so I noticed that my online fitness business is called Make Your Body Work. If anyone wants to check it out, you can go to makeyourbodywork.com, check it out. And one of the things that I noticed is that no one was leaving. I was this online coach and everyone was sticking with me. My retention rate was awesome. And I attributed a lot of it to the fact that the women I coached, so I only coached women in their menopausal years, which seems kind of weird. I was this young guy, you know, about 30 years old at the time, <laughs> I had this group that loved each other. And it was so cool because they were chatting about, yeah, the programming that I was taking them through. And yes, they were encouraging each other. And yes, they're answering each other's questions. But there was so much community there. I felt it really reminded me, Matt, of when I used to own a gym and I'd run boot camps. And for anyone who's watching this, if you ever run a boot camp, you see that a boot camp class, the camaraderie is so strong. And so I saw this happening in the Facebook group and thought, okay, this is a golden ticket. And every program I launched from there on out always had a Facebook group. Awesome. Yeah, that makes total sense. And so there's the stickiness factor. And I'm curious because one of the, there's two things that I think you're a master of when I look at that Facebook group. One is you're a master of FOMO, but two is you're a master of care. So one of the things you just mentioned is that the Facebook group you had for Make Your Body Work, these women were answering each other's questions and creating that community. But I'm curious because I think a lot of people who may have started a Facebook group in the past felt like they just were 
posting information constantly and getting no engagement. So what did you do to create that level of engagement? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And you know, what you just said is so true. If we went on Facebook right now and searched through Facebook groups, there's literally probably hundreds, at least tens of thousands, probably of hundreds of thousands of abandoned Facebook groups. And it's because people start them and expect that this group is just all of a sudden going to have this amazing culture and everyone's going to love each other and they can just sit back and sort of watch it happen. No way. It's a grind. And so I want to preface everything we're about to share. And Facebook groups are awesome. Like my business really depends on it. But I, I had to grind it out. Um, my current group, the OTF group, Online Trainers Federation that you mentioned, it's two and a half years old. And we actually had a coaching call the other day. And one of my now coaches who works with me, she was one of the first 13 members. So 13 people. Wow. <laughs> course that I sold. And we were laughing about it saying back in the day when there were just the 13 of us, I was posting all the time. And when I would post, I would literally tag all 13 members and ask them a personal question based on what I just posted and did this for months. And I know that sounds like people think, well, that's crazy. Like, why would you ever do this? Because when I set the tone of the culture and I set that expectation that everyone who's involved is going to participate, when the next 13 people join and then the next 100 people join, the next 1,000 people joined, that culture was already established. And so my job got easier and easier and easier, but it started out as a grind. Yeah, that makes total sense. So setting the tone with those first 13 people, you're tagging them. And then all of a sudden, when you bring new people in and they're being introduced, maybe it's not you tagging those people anymore. Maybe some of those relationships happen uh, between people in the group and then it can snowball. Yeah, I, like definitely that is true. So culture is one big part of a group is what do you establish the expectation is. The other thing that I see a lot of um, group admins misstep in it when it comes to Facebook groups is they add people to the group or they start a group, but there's no real purpose for it. And so, you know, if anyone has a group right now and we were sitting here chatting and I asked you, what's the purpose of your group? And not the purpose for you, but the purpose for a member. Why would a member want to join? What's in it for them? And that's really important. So when people join my group very early on, I want them to understand that yes, they're getting community, but there's also a purpose for them being there. And there's a reason why they will benefit if they interact. Yeah. And that makes total sense. So just to give people a tangible example, what is the purpose of Online Tra Trainers Federation? Yeah. And this goes across all my groups. So if anyone's listening, and again, <laughs> Matt, hopefully you don't mind me throwing this call to action, but you can see it in action. If you want to join, you can go to onlinetrainersfederation.com slash Facebook and see this in action. So when people join, their vast majority of people, probably 90% of people are enrolled in some sort of program of mine. And whether that's a free program or like a trial program, or it's a paid program, they're there to learn something and to build something. And so every step of all my programs, again, free or paid, there's homework. And when people do homework, where do they contribute their feedback or complete their homework? Well, it's always in the Facebook group. And there's two really big benefits of this. Number one is it creates accountability. I actually, right before we got on this call, I loved it. There was someone who opted in for one of my free programs and he posted in the group and said, I'm sorry that I've fallen behind, but I'm catching up with my homework. And I've never interacted with the guy. Like, I, honestly, I have no idea who he is, but it was so cool that he saw that he was doing a program. There was an expectation that he'd be doing homework and he saw in the group that other people were doing it. And so he felt like he was falling behind by not contributing. And that's what I want is I want people to feel like there's that expectation. So that's number one is I give them homework so that they have a purpose to do something. But number two is I want people to see other people's homework. And you've already mentioned the term a couple of times to create that FOMO. So those people who are doing free programs in my group, they're all doing their homework. They're all relating to each other. They're all building friends. Uh, they're networking, you know, really responding to the culture of my group. But they also see my paid clients. And they see that my paid clients are doing something very distinctly different. And that, Matt, 100% of people who sign up for my courses or my coaching, they say, I saw on the Facebook group when you were doing X, Y, and Z, or I saw that client of yours post this, and I thought, I want that. So in terms of purpose, those are my two purposes when it comes to Facebook groups. Yeah. 
and makes total sense. And I, I see that in the group and I definitely am perfectly fine with you throwing that call to action out because for me being in the online trainers federation group, I'm not an OTF elite, so I'm not one of your paying customers, but it doesn't matter because I'm still getting a lot of value and I still see what a, uh, a really a profitable Facebook group can look like one that has this high degree of care, but also it shows people what the path is towards because these people you're working with, they're online trainers and you're helping them build businesses that change the world, but also that take them from that, you know, zero dollars in income to however much they want to be making. And so it's it's one of those things where like you show them the way to what they want within the Facebook group. And I think that's such an important thing for people to understand if they're building a Facebook group is is how to do that. But we just mentioned the FOMO piece of things. Now, I, you often talk about that care, that C part of things. Um, for you, even though the, the culture is moving, like your picture is at the top of Online Trainers Federation. Like it is a group that is run and administrated by you. So how do you now, with 3,000 people in the group, provide that high level of care that you were able to provide when you only had 13? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And we were chatting before we started rolling the show here. Um, my, my team has grown. And so I have people who have gone through my paid for programs. They built huge businesses and they've come on board. And now they're helping me with that, helping nurture and do all the things that I used to be sort of the one man show doing. So that is part of it. But Matt, I still, every single day, I probably spend about at least an hour a day on Facebook. My wife and I, we actually just got back. We were on a cruise last week. And while we were on the boat, it was so cool. We we're in the middle of the ocean and we had bought a Wi-Fi package and we were sitting on our deck on our little cabin in this cruise. All you can see is water on every side of us. And we we're both sitting there on Facebook, nurturing and answering questions and encouraging people in the OTF group because we love it. And so I know some people talk about, you know, having this passive income and having a business that just earns you millions of dollars while you go on cruises or sit on the beach and maybe someone else has figured that out. I don't think that exists. And for me, the thing that I do every day is nurture my audience, even if they're not paying for anything from me is I love helping them. I, I just know that, I know it sounds sort of cliche, but when I help someone get what they want, then when they want something else, I'm the guy that by default, they're going to come to. And so it's, it's worth my time. Yeah. And it makes total sense. So I'm curious from a time management perspective, like if you're putting an hour in, what does that look like? And how do you also identify and prioritize who and how you're following up? Mm, yeah, really good question. Um, so yeah, like I said, I do an hour every single day. I try and do it in two blocks. Sometimes I do. I admit Facebook sucks me in and I do more than an hour, but Pretty much every day, I do a half hour relatively early in the morning, and then again, a half hour later in the day. And one really powerful thing that I learned is as the group was growing, when it went from like 1,000 to 1,500 to 2,000, and now it's at 3,500 or maybe even a little bit higher than that, I noticed that as it grew and grew and grew, if I tried to handle every question and be like the authority on every conversation not only was I burning myself out, but I was actually doing a disservice to my group. And so now, Matt, my ideal strategy is I come in in the morning because there's been all this activity in the evening. And while I was sleeping, all these conversations were happening. I chime in where needed, again, whether it's a paying client or not. Quite often, I'll record little videos. And I'm sure you see me doing this. I use something called Loom, record videos, teaching people different things. And then I go away. And the beautiful thing is when I go away... I notice a whole lot of other conversation happens and it's not with me. It's with other members in the group responding to these little tidbits that I dropped in the morning. And so then when I come back later in the day, then I can do the same thing again. I can either like kind of high five everyone who chimed in or give them another little tidbit. And then that conversation keeps going overnight while I sleep and it's waiting there again in the morning. And I absolutely love it. To some people, maybe that sounds like a nightmare for me. It's service at the highest level that I can provide. And it's also prospecting at the highest level that I can do. Yeah. And to be honest, when you initially talked about how you funneled people into the Facebook group with their homework and assignments from the programs that you have, I was like, oh, I kind of maybe I'll make a Slack group or whatever because, you know, oh, Facebook. And the reason that that was my thought pattern is just because like Facebook seems pretty sloppy with the notifications. 
So I'm curious, like, how do you make sure that a conversation that you're in, let's say with one of your paid members on Facebook, doesn't slip through the cracks? Like they've responded to you, but then maybe you don't see it. How do you stay on top of that? Yeah, again, great question. So when a group is smaller, I use my notifications just like I use my inbox. And literally, I'll open up in the morning and everything that's unread, I literally go through every one. And there's a little button on the right-hand side that you can click to say it's read. And so I know if someone likes something of mine, I don't need to go back and do anything. So I'll just make sure those are all read. But anytime it's a post and there's a little icon, the group icon will show up if someone posted their own content. I will click on that and actually go through and take a look. And I always like it. And if it warrants some sort of response or a follow-up question, then I will post on it. So literally every single post in the group, I would have action on. And then same thing when you look at your notifications, there's a different icon. It's usually like a little speech bubble, a green speech bubble. I will click on every single one of those. Nowadays, now that I have a team and have some admins who are doing this full-time, they do a lot of that heavy lifting. I still go through and just like my inbox, I clean out my inbox every single day. I clean out my Facebook notifications every day, but a lot more of them, I just click on to make sure that someone has responded and that someone has given attention and then I'll move on. So there's less that I actually respond to today, but everyone is getting a response from someone who knows what they're talking about. Yeah. And that makes total sense to me as well. Um, You know, getting that inbox to zero essentially One of the things that I was initially fearful about when I started my Facebook group was how am I going to be able to make sure that I respond to everybody? Because I started getting into a habit with Facebook. I wasn't posting anything before I started my group. I really wasn't active on there. So I just kind of, if I went on Facebook, I checked my notifications and uh, maybe someone commented on a photo from 10 years ago, but I don't really care what they had to say. So I'd get in the habit of leaving that there. And I had this fear that I was just going to notice a comment maybe when I was checking my Facebook while I was you know, in the passenger seat of a car and then forget about it and oops, I've missed an important conversation. Uh, but that makes total sense just to you know, use that feature, mark as red, get your inbox down to zero at that point. And you know what? Again, people who are listening to this, you might think, wow, that sounds like so much work. But let me reframe that a little bit and just think about if your clients are asking you questions via, I often hear it's like text message or email. And so let's just imagine you have an online business. Imagine you have, let's say, 10 clients. That could be 10 siloed messages. And when I say siloed, I just mean it's just between the client and yourself. No one else sees it. 10 messages per day. And out of those 10 messages per day, there's probably crossover in 50% of them. But you're still having these siloed messages. So instead, when I go and create those messages in the Facebook group, Not only am I answering those questions, but those crossovers can be referenced to each other. And then that joins people who have a similar question or a similar struggle or a similar win and creates some camaraderie there. But it also does this all publicly. And again, I just can't say enough about that, about coaching publicly so that people who aren't already your paying client see what it is that you can do, see these solutions you provide. So the coaches who I work with, One of the first things we do in remodeling their online business is remove almost all siloed private communication and run it all through the group. Yeah. And that's something that is so different from the model that I've been running for years with online coaching, but it makes so much sense because I used to think about like, okay, how can I make a, you know, one of those like FAQ things that you see on like tech companies. It's like you go in and you've got to type in and find an answer and it'll say, did this answer your question? And if not, you can finally chat with someone. Uh, I was like, maybe I need to make one of those because people are asking the same questions, but this makes so much sense. And I've actually been a little bit more active in the Precision Nutrition Graduates Facebook group and their admins do a really good job of actually, they must have a document where they're just like, oh, this question gets asked a lot. Here's a master thread on it and they'll link to it. And I think that's, that's a really cool way of going about it as well. Yeah. And that's the strategy we do use is you can save your permalinks for posts. I do it a lot with the video content that I'll create in the OTF group is just save permalinks. And so whenever a conversation comes up exactly that, just drop the link and boom, you're off. Yeah. One of the things that I wanted to mention, I think this would be helpful for your audience as well, is when you're thinking about your competitors. And so, you know, in my space, I help fitness professionals build online businesses. Like Matt, you know this, that's a saturated market. There are a ton of coaches, business coaches, who are doing a very similar thing. 
And I can tell you something that when I get on sales calls and bring people into my paid for programs, quite often that question will come up and they'll say, you know, Dave, like my Facebook newsfeed is blown up with people who say that they can do the same thing as you. And a really nice thing that feels super genuine is really helpful for my clients is I can say to them authentically, have you seen XYZ other coach? Have you seen them coach? And quite often the person who I'm on the call with will say, no, you know, I saw their testimonial videos and I saw this and I saw that. And my response to them will be, listen, I coach everything that I do is 100% public for you to watch. And so you've been part of my group for the last couple of months. And so you've seen the clients that I'm working with. What's your expectation of what we'll do with your business based on what you've already seen? And when someone hears that and understands that, the chance of them then going to my competitor and saying, I want to hire that guy is almost zero. And so I want everyone who's listening to this right now to think about that for yourself, because I'm imagining that everyone who's listening to this, you have some sort of online health, nutrition, fitness business. That's a saturated market. But you can set yourself apart, again, by creating that FOMO and delivering so much value simply by coaching your clients in a public forum so that no one second guesses you. No one wonders, well, what can you actually do to help me? No one can you know, say, I'm not sure about this guy. Are you a scam? Because they've seen it. And if you do that, if you put the work in, instantly you've set yourself apart from 90% of other fitness coaches out there who aren't willing to put that work in. Yeah. And man, it's, it's interesting to hear that perspective of it because it's like, yeah, that guy's got all these testimonial videos, but like, do you know what his process looks like? And the cool thing about what you're doing as well is like, I can see from the outside, I'm not a paying member, but I can see you know, kind of some of the resources that you provide to your paying clients. And I can see like what the topic is for your group Zoom calls that the paying clients get on. And I'm like, wow, those are really awesome topics. That's something I'd like to learn about. And then not only that, but you're asking people that were on the call to comment with their follow up actions. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, you can really see, even though there's that FOMO, you, like, I don't know what went on on that group Zoom call. I don't know how deep you went on those topics, but I'm like, those look like things I'd like to learn about. And wow, all of his clients are like, this is my follow up action. I'm so stoked. These are my wins for the week. And yeah, it really does provide that affirmation that, you know, Dave, Dave is doing something that actually works. Yeah. And again, I want to just translate this back into the terms of everyone who might be watching this or listening to this. Think about yourself. So imagine you had a group coaching call or a one-on-one -on -one coaching call and you created some sort of resource or you gave a plan to someone and that was posted publicly in the group. I hear this a lot. People will say, well, if I post it publicly in the group, then anyone can steal it or anyone can use it. And the answer is, or my response is, yeah, they can. And I've actually had people who have been hanging out in the OTF group for years and they will say to me like, hey, I took your um, the template that you used to create your online program outlines and they'll show it to me. And it's cool because it's actually, they took the template that I use with my paying clients. And so you hear that and you might think, well, that's weird because some people are paying you for that and other people are getting it for free. Like, how is that fair? But everyone who's listening, all you coaches who are listening, think about this. Do your clients, are they getting results because of a template you give them? Are they getting results because of a plan or a download or some little trick that you taught them? Like, no, our clients get results because we as coaches are paying attention to them. We're caring about them. We're making them feel special. We're highlighting their wins. We're holding them accountable. We're keeping them motivated. It's all relational things. Like that's why our clients are really going to succeed. So I could give you every resource in one of my paid for programs. And you know what? People could take that and probably improve their business from it. But until they actually work with me and let me walk with them down that, that path or through that journey, that's the game-changing moment. And so I just want to encourage everyone here, if you get worried about how much should you give away, man, give it all away. And just remember that when people see that, they're going to want to work with you and you, they're going to want to have that relationship. Yeah. And I'm curious though, because... You want to give like we can give it all away, but there are some things that are behind a paywall. So like for you within your business, what are those things that are exclusively for your paying clients that are within that group? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. And, and that is true. So I have a membership. I call it a dashboard for each of my paid for programs. 
And you know what? There are some little nuances and there are some things that we do in that dashboard that's behind the paywall that isn't accessible to other people, but the vast majority of it is accessible. The difference between a paid for coaching program is it's all sequentially lined out and myself and my team of coaches walk our clients through those steps. Like Matt, do I think that I'm so smart that I have some sort of trick or some sort of information that isn't available online somewhere else for free? No, like you could probably find pretty much everything that I teach somewhere online for free. But what I've done in my programs is put it in the exact order and then I walk people through it in the exact way so that they actually do it. And it's the same. I think about all the time like coaching. I'm a business to business coach, but think about it for B to C. Imagine a client who wants to lose weight. Do you, Matt, or do any of the coaches who are listening to this, do do any of us have any information that that client can't find elsewhere? No, not at all. It's all freely available. But they still haven't been able to put it together or at least had the confidence. You know, Matt, you alluded to care. And obviously, you've heard me teach on this. I think that there's really three things that as coaches, whether you're coaching business or coaching fitness or coaching anything, three things that we have to deliver. We have to deliver confidence. So our clients have to believe that we're taking them in the right direction. And imagine if you remove the coach and someone's trying to figure things out on their own, that's the piece they will never have. They'll never be fully confident they're going in the right direction. And if they're not fully confident they're going in the right direction, the next C, which is consistency, it completely falls apart because they feel good about it for a week and then things don't go the way they want or they don't get the result. And all of a sudden, their confidence starts to fail and their consistency stops. And so what happens when people aren't consistent? Well, of course, they're not going to get results. And then the third C is the one you alluded to is is care, is we have that caring relationship so that people know, like, and trust us, and they want to stay with us. Yeah. Awesome. Dave, I think that is an absolutely fantastic golden nugget for us to wrap things up on. Is there anything else that you think the audience should know about running a Facebook group, providing that value, or those three C's that you just mentioned? Um, honestly, like if anyone who's listening to this, two big takeaways for you. Number one is if you're going to start a Facebook group, think of it in terms of where it's going to lead your business long-term. You know, it's going to feel like a ton of work probably for the first couple of months, but you're going to see that snowball effect that we talked about today. And so it's worth it only if you're going to stick with it. If you know you're not going to stick with it, don't start it because there's nothing worse than what I call a ghost town Facebook group where there's no interaction happening or it's just you posting random articles that you found online. So knowing that it's going to be work, it's going to be a grind at first, but it'll pay off. And then number two, I want you to think about that question that I asked or that idea of what, what's in it for them? What's in it for your members? When they arrive in your group, are they supposed to be spectators just watching you post cool information? Or is there something that you want them to do that's going to make them a participant? And we talked about a couple ideas of how you can make people a participant, but that's what a group is about. It's about community. It's about participation. So are you dedicated to making this happen? And then what can you do to make people in your group, not a spectator, but actually make them a participant? Yeah. It's awesome. One of the things actually, just to throw this in the pot is I've, if somebody doesn't introduce themselves after they've joined the group, I'm reaching out on DM and I'm like, introduce yourself. Why'd you join this group? I'd love to know why you joined. If you're going to, you know, just hide in the shadows, what what can we help you do? And that's really helped improve the engagement. And I think that those people who get that DM and then eventually introduce themselves have become some of the just pillars of the group that I have now. Man, Matt, that's above and beyond. I, I, I love that. I'm not sure I'm ready to commit to that. That'd be a ton of work. But I, I could totally see how that would really give that uh, one-on-one touch. So that person who you PM, man, they're going to feel like the most special pupil in your group. Of course, they're going to interact. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, my group's a little bit smaller at this point than 3,000 people. So I have the ability to do that. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things I recommend people do is when your audience is small, you can reach out one to one. Yeah. Awesome, Dave. Well, where we've already talked about where people can find you with makeyourbodywork.com as well as the online trainer federation dot com slash Facebook, which will take them to the group. Is there anywhere else uh, people can see more from you, learn more about you? 
Yeah, good question. So my website is just onlinetrainersfederation.com. And um, then, like you said, the Facebook group is just slash Facebook. On the website, um, I create a new piece of video content every single week. And because I actually walk the walk, so I'm not just making up ideas about things that work for online fitness coaches. I still am an online fitness coach. I still run makeyourbodywork.com. And so a lot of what I learn that works for my online business, I just over the shoulder record exactly what I'm doing. And I turn that into a YouTube video, into a blog post. So there's a brand new one of those every week. You can check that out on my website as well as a podcast. We were just chatting about this before we started recording this one. I'm going to get back into recording that on a regular basis because there's some really awesome material in that as well. So yeah, onlinetrainersfederation.com. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Dave. I think for anybody who does decide to take that leap and create that community that this is going to be like a field guide in terms of an episode. Oh man, my pleasure. Um, Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah. We'll talk soon, Dave. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Dave Smith. In the comments below, tell me, are you using Facebook groups for your business or another platform? And how's it going? Please make sure while you're down in the comments to like the show and subscribe to the channel to get notified when we release new shows to help you run your coaching business more profitably and serve your clients more effectively. Much love Beyond Macros Heroes. I'll see you next time.